Oh, hey there. Want to know what the number one thing that keeps entrepreneurs from being successful is? Well, I'm about to tell you, stick around. So all my life, I've just been the type of person, just do stuff and not think too much about it. Just like take action. And then like, I always say better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And so that's just kind of how I've always lived my life. It's like I leap before I look. And, you know, that's been a tremendous factor to my success. Uh, the other day, let me, before I get into the story here, uh, two days ago, I spent two hours locked outside of my balcony with uh, my best friend and another close friend where my three-year-old son, you may know him as Jax, uh, decided to just lock the door on the balcony, the top lock on the door, the front door was locked, and the apartment complex had to drill the lock. Scared to death. I couldn't tell you how many times I thought, well, fuck it, I'm just going to jump off of here. <laughs> it's not my finest moment, right? Then yesterday, we had like what people in Arizona would know as a haboob or a monsoon that came through Dallas. It was like this wall of dust, uh, a massive amount of rain in a short period of time. Like I opened my window uh, to go through the drive through and my whole car was drenched. I had to just drive off. It was crazy. Well, it shut the electricity down. There's still 170,000 people around Dallas without electricity. Well, it shut electricity down to my apartment building and I had just went and got groceries and uh, prior to that so I had to carry and they were all drinks it was like vodka champagne uh, orange juice like all it was all liquid monsters like it so it was heavy ass shit that I had to carry up 11 flights of stairs yesterday uh, I thought I was gonna pass out twice 11 flights of stairs is a lot carrying about 100 pounds worth of groceries and it it dawned on me it's like you know what had I thought about the downsides of, uh, you know, being locked out on the balcony, <laughs> that sucks. Had I thought about the downside of maybe having to one day climb flights of stairs to get up into this beautiful penthouse that I actually move out of on Monday into an even nicer one. That's what I'm talking about. Winning. Anyway, so and I started thinking, I'm like, you know what? That's what causes a lot of entrepreneurs to fail. I think it's the number one reason that entrepreneurs fail. See, they outweigh the downside. See, before they decide to, for example, take advantage of the beautiful penthouse views, which are absolutely gorgeous across the city from start to finish, right? So before they, they, they can see themselves in that, they have to figure out there has to be some kind of downside. And then they see the capability or the possibility, rather, of being locked out on the balcony or maybe having to climb flights of stairs to get home in the evening. Multiple, imagine my friends and neighbors that live on the 20th floor, imagine that they're old as fuck, imagine how pissed they are, right? And so a lot of entrepreneurs, they see the downside, and they let the downside outweigh the upside, and they never take action at all. Meanwhile, the upside is you can pretty much do whatever the fuck you want once you get a penthouse, right? You can pick up chicks at the bar, you can have your friends over, the people always want to come back to your place, the after party, you can throw things like Break Free Academy in the Aqua Lounge, the possibilities are fucking unlimited, but yet a lot of people would never take the risk to be here because the downside, oh man, what if one month I don't make $5,000 to pay the rent? Then what am I going to do? All right? You fucking hustle harder. That's what you're going to do. Who thinks like that? Not me, anyway. Me, I'm just going to take the risk and be like, hey, I'm going to move in here and this is what I'm going to do. And if there's some downside that come along with it, I'll deal with that when I cross that bridge. But I'm not going to let some potential downside in the future keep me from enjoying the upside right now. And that's the challenge I got for you this week. Stop letting the downside of shit get in the way of the upside. It's the number one reason entrepreneurs fail is because they're too busy focusing on the what could be the worst case scenario, which it fucking rarely is. That's why it's called worst case scenario. A little passionate about that. So stop thinking about the downside. Stop letting the bullshit that could possibly happen get in the way of the awesome things that are always going to happen. See, it's fucking rare that you get locked out on your balcony for two hours. Trust me, there's people been living in this building for years. It's never happened to them. Lucky me, right? <laughs> but you know what? That's just a chance that I'm willing to take in order to enjoy the fruits of my labor here in this place. And I'm not trying to talk to you and brag to you about my place. I'm talking about my place being a metaphor for your escalating ladder in life. So quit letting the downside hold you back. Don't be a victim to the Ebola of entrepreneurism. <laughs> Ah, see, catchy, witty today. So, hey, if you like this, share it. Obviously, I'm a little passionate about it. I don't want you to let downside get in the way of you taking advantage of the upside. So go out there today. Stop being fucking pessimistic. Ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Leap before you look and make a move, damn it. You want some <laughs> shit, man?